Um, your Excellencies, uh, Venerables, uh, Professors, Doctors, Dashos, uh, Ladies and Gentlemen. Um, in fact, uh, sometimes I feel slightly out of place uh, for me um, as a lay person with limited um, knowledge and exposure on Buddhism to speak on the Buddhist philosophy. However, um, what I'm, whatever I'm going to share with you today is uh, the result of the small scratches and reflections that I made on the profound philosophy of Buddhism. Um, and before um, I start, I would like to pay homage to our living uh, Bodhisattva leaders, in particular our hereditary monarchs who manifest uh, tremendous um, wisdom, knowledge, love and compassion for the country and for the people. And it's my sincere hope that all the political, business, um, and other leaders such as um, military, academic, educational leaders emulate uh, the Bodhisattva uh, qualities uh, in their leadership. And in this way, I think that uh, I need to make it um, compatible to, as my topic says, uh, uh, Bodhisattva leadership of the modern world. Uh, Basically, my presentation is divided into two uh, uh, areas. The first, I will provide um, background of how uh, Bud Buddhism has influenced Buddhist um, culture and how the culture, Buddhist culture, has influenced Buddhist, uh, Buddhist leadership and values. Um, and in the second one, I'll present the, please uh, be reminded, this is a theoretical leadership. Uh, uh, it's no, uh, it's, it has not been tested, it's yet to be tested. Uh, uh, leadership model that I have developed based on the few readings and reflections that I did. Uh, it is said that Buddhist people leave, uh, let me quote uh, Tasha Karma Ura in one of his uh, BBS shows that uh, Buddhists live in the crucible of uh, Buddhist values. And they are ingrained so much so that uh, they don't realize the fact that they're living in that culture. Um, and I'm one of those. I didn't realize it unless I started to think and reflect and do some readings. Uh, in short, uh, Buddhist values permeate or permeate in every aspect of Buddhist life. And sometimes it's like a fish. Uh, having, uh, living in water, we do not realize that we are, uh, the fish is living in water. So it is only when it comes out that you realize the importance. And uh, in the first part of my uh, leadership, uh, uh, I have, uh, uh, sorry, um, this, is, uh, this is what I had been talking about. And uh, it says that uh, culture uh, influences our life, uh, values, and this further infl uh, influences um, leadership. And in fact, in every culture, there are leadership values and beliefs. And uh, in the readings that I did, most of the, let me say safely, I think 90% of the leadership literature comes from America and other Anglophone countries. And there's very few, or in fact, uh, I didn't come across much uh, that uh, the, on the leadership that deals with the Oriental um, beliefs and values. Um, in fact, uh, yes, Oriental leadership is basically influenced by Buddhism, uh, but I also accept that there are others, something like Confucianism, Twaism, and other uh, indigenous uh, cultures. Yes, um, this is what I had been saying, and some of the examples of uh, how Buddhist ways of life are influenced are evident in some of the ways we believe, we talk, we think. Yes. And one of the most important and very pertinent to the Buddhist life is Thadamsi, uh, which comes in many forms, as uh, many of you will be aware. Thadamsi, which came out quite a number of times, is between teacher and students, uh, especially in Vajrayana. Uh, and also Thadamsi, or the Samaya, the highest vow, between friends, between uh, husband and wife, and the list goes on. So these, uh, though it, uh, it may be a religious person, one could be a 
layperson, but this um, talk of uh, the belief of Thadamsi is on our tongue. And we do believe, and that's good, I think. And the other one is uh, cause and effect. We normally say, if you do that, lay song, give us a go. We have to collect merit, avoid sin. I think these are the very essence. Um, and the reference uh, to the reverence of to the teachers, I think I have uh, mentioned. And what is Bodhisattva? And yesterday and today we had been talking about uh, who is Bodhisattva. But uh, I think sometimes uh, we need reminders. Uh, we all know, but we need reminders. The very fact that we are here, there are tankas all around, and other Buddhist um, paraphernalia is a reminder that we are talking on a very important topic of Vajrayana. We all need re reminders, don't we? We all need that. So as a reminder, I'm saying that uh, Vajrayana, uh, sorry, um, Bodhisattva or Jangshu Sampa is a person, enlightened person, but who has deferred his entering Nirvana for the sentient beings. And uh, the two things that come out very strongly is compassion and altruism, working for others, selflessness. And uh, yes, again a reminder, uh, the Buddha nature, or we call Tathagata Garpa, or uh, Sugata Garpa, or Dejin Sheikh Ningpo, whatever, uh, says that it is there in all of us, as yesterday it was uh, mentioned, which is cognizant, intelligent, uh, which forms the innermost part of our thoughts and mind. Uh, but. Uh, our mind, outer mind, uh, is uh, yeah, manifested, but the inner Buddha nature, uh, I think, is pure and is present in everyone, but it's uh, temporarily obscured by the clashes of the Nyan monks, which needs to be cleared. Yes, analogy uh, that Buddha nature is something like a nugget of gold which is uh, shining, bright, brilliant, which has its own characteristics. Even if you drop it in the pit of rubbish, I don't, uh, it, it will not lose its essence. It will remain as gold. It will not get rusted like iron. So it's permanent, it's bright. And also something like a lotus flower that comes out of dirty surrounding clashes, but it doesn't uh, have the smell of that dirty surrounding. At another level, I think it is comparable to uh, Ugin Guru Rinpoche, but Masamba was birthed from lotus flower, very pure, omniscient. Uh, the weather today is slightly better, but this was the condition yesterday. Um, yes, conditions around could be like this because of clashes, nyanmong, ignorance, uh, ego, whatever. But it does not mean that there is no sun. There is sun, but the sun is temporarily covered uh, by the clashes. Okay, this is the, um, now I'm presenting you. Uh, um, I could not fit the whole model uh, in one slide, so I have broken it up. But however, I'll present the whole um, uh, model towards the end. Thank you. Uh, Buddha nature, which needs to be uh, which is temporarily covered but needs to be cleared by certain um, methods, mindfulness methods, be it uh, meditation or contemplation or reflections. And that will lead to the uh, Bodhisattva mind, compassionate and altruistic. And um, these uh, I have drawn from the uh, Bodhicitta or the aspiration or motivation uh, of king leadership, uh, I don't, I'll, I'll not explain. Then comes uh, boatman leadership. You can uh, think of the characteristics and shepherd leadership. These are uh, bodhisattva leadership approaches, which are executed through um, through uh, bodhi, uh, bodhisattva leadership styles, specification uh, or shiva, and then uh, shiva is specifying, live, being very passive, listening. And then geva, um, or um, yes, en uh, enriching the people, whoever you come in contact with, and then magnetizing, 
which is uh, equivalent to something like the Western uh, leadership's uh, theory of uh, charismatic leadership or inspirational leadership, and uh, drugpo or subjugation, which uh, people think that, uh, yes, as Buddhists, we should not engage in such, but sometimes in Vajrayana, such transgressive acts are allowed. But uh, the main thing is that it should be motivated by good intention in not to punish others in order that it's helpful to others. And such things are evident in many occasions. And one of the examples could be the Rudra myth. And also the, in many acts of Guru Rinpoche. And passing through this process, it is believed that a leader will exhibit uh, the qualities, the external leadership behaviors that align with uh, the four immeasurables, or boundless four, or semishi, and also the uh, six uh, transcendent, uh, uh, thank you, uh, transcendent uh, uh, perfections of paramita. And if a leader uh, exhibits such things, and the question of happiness not coming is not there, I think. Uh, and uh, this is the overall, um, the uh, whole, um, uh, Bodhisattva leadership model that I have developed. And it's my sincere hope that uh, um, this, will, uh, this leadership model will contribute uh, additional literature to the uh, presently Western dominant uh, leadership. And thank you. <laughs>